and so does he, Leslie. Yeah, Kate. Will you listen to me? Listen, there's a two-hour special coming up next month. They want you. So does he. We'll watch it at home. No. <laughs> and honey, honey, will you listen to me? Consolidated Studios is still offering that three-picture-a-year deal. He's offering me a lifetime guarantee. A guarantee of what? Security. Security on a college professor's salary, and he's not even a nuclear physics. That's where the loot is. But a mathematician, he can be replaced by IBM. <laughs> not after office hours. <laughs> you can forward my mail to Redwood College, Crocker, California. Darling, please. Look, I have heard of whirlwind courtships, but you've only known this man one hysterical weekend. Hysterical to you, beautiful to me. Well, at least wear your mink. Faculty wives do not wear mink. I'll keep it in cold storage until the annulment. Great engineering, like two classic Jaguars. With their motors still running. <laughs> I hate to interrupt your research, Jeffrey, but let's go and get married. Well, that's a very stimulating idea. Look, will somebody please listen to me? Red butter. Salt, pepper. <laughs> Congratulations. I give it six months. glass was more economical. And more transparent. Well, up to now, we haven't needed curtains. Casey! What's the matter? Well, aren't you going to carry me across the threshold? No, I, I don't think so. Jeff, I'm a bride, and I expect my husband to carry me across the threshold. Why? It's an old tradition. A modern, emancipated girl like you? Come on, Casey, don't clutter up our marriage with a remnant of outdated tradition. <laughs> I'm asking you nicely. Please clutter up our marriage with outdated tradition. <laughs> Mathematician never jumps to conclusions. Let's try that experiment again. <laughs> oh, Ollie! Well, welcome to the happy couple. Ollie, I'd like you to meet my new wife. Mrs. Edwards, welcome and best wishes. How do you do? How do you do? Here, let me help you up, Tom. Oh, no. uh, I'm uh, Professor Ollie Harrington, your husband's roommate. How do you do, Professor? <laughs> roommate? I knew there was something I forgot to tell you. Well, it doesn't matter. He should have used the past tense. Yeah. He persuaded me to help him remodel this carriage house, and now he persuaded me that it's a carriage house built for two. One, two. I'm sorry if I evicted you, Professor. Oh, so am I. You know, you're a definite improvement over what we had here before, which was a very fat cleaning woman. <laughs> well, excuse me, I'm dividing groceries. 
Oh, with the Jeff, I'm taking the tuna fish and leaving you the salmon. And if I could pack it up, I'd take half the living room and my bedroom, too. Are the rest of the nitties as friendly as he is? The males, yes. But as far as the females are concerned, uh, I haven't done too much research. As far as I'm concerned, darling, you have your PhD. <laughs> Come on, show me the rest of the house. Guided tour, eh? All right. Right here in front of you, my dear, is the uh, library. <laughs> this is the music room. And uh, here we have the gaming room. Uh, bread and butter. Salt and pepper. Here's the bar, the kitchen. You know, careful, darling. I don't know who this fellow is. He doesn't even live here anymore. <laughs> I'm laughing through my tears. <laughs> and uh, right here we have the... Uh... Bedroom. Bedroom. We even have inside plumbing. Prove it. Run my bar. While I'm at it, I'll even draw your bath. <laughs> How do you like it? Oh, darling, after all the hotel rooms I've lived in, this looks like the Taj Mahal. Just imagine. A week ago, I was a single girl, a singer rehearsing for a television show, and here I am with a husband and a completely new billing. Mrs. Professor Edwards. Well, how about me? I figured I was going to drive that Duesenberg alone for the rest of my life. <laughs> Let's not try and figure it out, dear. We're married. I was trying to figure it out. My tub runneth over. In incidentally, you left here five days ago with one clean shirt and a briefcase full of notes for a television seminar. By the way, my uh, tie photographed beautifully. And today you walk back in the door with an armful of blonde. One question, how? Well, I was in Studio A doing Invitation to Wisdom. Yeah? She was in Studio B rehearsing. Yeah? We met outside by the parking meter. She was wearing, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, leotards. Oh, yeah, leotards, Tight, yeah. Tight, black. Black, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, she looked at the rumble seat of the Duesenberg. I looked at her. She looked at the engine. I looked at her. Then she looked at the spare tire mount. She said she thought it was a very nice car, but uh, why didn't I get a new one? Well, that got me sore. So, 43 hours later, we got married. The only thing my car ever did is depreciate. <laughs> All right, Agnes, back to the hive. I tell you, Jeff, ever since you left, she's been the most nervous queen bee you ever saw. It's all right, Ag baby. I'm back. <laughs> They've been working overtime out there in the hive, too. Well, talk me out the door, Jeff. You know, I still have a vague feeling that maybe you could have moved out and I could have stayed. Oh, you wouldn't have been happy. The patter of tiny feet would have driven you crazy. Jeff, darling! <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Well, well... See you later. Not later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Where's Ollie? Uh, he uh, evacuated the premises. Oh, what a shame. And I didn't even get to say goodbye. Say, that's a very beautiful... Uh... And what? I'm wearing it just for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad you appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it very much. But I'm not sure the dean's wife will. The dean's wife? Yeah. We're due there in half an hour. <laughs> not on our first night at home. Who arranged that? Well, that's a command performance. The faculty wants to meet you and welcome you. I'm perfectly satisfied with the welcoming committee right here. It's tradition, Casey. Did I or did I not carry you across the threshold? You did. All right. So into your basic black and over to the deans. As my husband, the dean, always says, there's no such thing as a small college, only a small mind. I met the dean at the door. Oh! <laughs> now, let me introduce you to the rest of our faculty. 
This is Professor Gerald Dudley of biology. I hear you're doing wonderful work on the inheritance factor of mutant chromosomes. Well, we're doing our best. How do you do? And this is Professor Jackson. We call him Stoney, physical ed and football coach. Last year, three wins, three losses. Well, you'll do much better next year, I know. Why, thank you. I may call on you to give us that pep talk during the half, man. <laughs> I love I the May Fogarty. Economics one and two. I just have to have your recipe for cherry pie. I hear it's sensational. Oh, it is. First you take a cup of shortening, and then you I melt it. Later, I do, Louise. And this is Professor. How am I doing? Amazing. Remember them all. I'm a very quick study. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Professor Ernest Wilcox. English and German music. <laughs> Only in the daytime. At the evening, it's Earl Garner. Excuse me. Sit down, won't you? How do you do? I really loved your album, Casey at the Throttle. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. Miraculous, Jeffrey. According to Gebhardt's law of probabilities, there was one chance in 17,000 that a dull bachelor like you would go to a city of several million and come up with a wife like that. Well, this was one time when Gebhardt had nothing to do with it. Just wonderful. You know, if you're only a student here, why, we could use you in some of our drama club shows. Oh, I'm afraid not, Professor. Marriage and career just don't mix, so they say. Very perceptive, Mrs. Edwards. I'm sure you've noticed the same behavior pattern as I have. The people who need to express themselves on a stage are often merely exhibitionists. I wouldn't say that, Dudley. <sighs> no, neither would I. Rather, I would say that they were acting out some childish fantasy, expressing some inner emotional lack. Now, since the time of the court jester. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I think you're indulging in generality. So do I. The performer is, after all, merely a slave to his talent. He is driven by a compulsion to express it, whether people want him to or not. And what is your attitude about performance, Jeff? Well, I uh, think there's a certain amount of truth in everything that's been said, but... Uh... But what? Well, let's not indict the poor performers. Perhaps they are acting out their pathetic little fantasies. Don't condemn them for their harmless exhibitionism. That's all they know. And remember, it takes two elements to create a show. Not only the performer, who may be making a spectacle of himself, but the audience that's cheering him on. Right? A little punch. I'm tempted, but I think I'll wait till I get home. <laughs> It's your husband. I brought you a nightcap. Hey, hey, well, where's that other thing? Your, your... Uh, My pen Yeah. Oh, that was just a silly bit of exhibitionist fluff. Now that I found out why I was immature enough to wear it, I don't have to wear it anymore. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to make myself some hot milk. <laughs> it puts me to sleep the minute my head hits the pillow. Okay, see, you sound irritated. Oh, no, that was an hour ago. I've gotten over that. 
Now I'm furious. Oh, something one of the faculty said must have upset you. No. It's what they didn't say. All those people talking about me like I was a specimen on a slide. And where were you? Focusing the microscope. Oh, oh, oh that little discussion about show business. Well, I, I, I personally thought some of it was rather stimulating. Like being burned at the stake. Oh, but I mean, intellectually speaking, it was a marvelous... Intellectually speaking? You weren't so intellectual when you picked me up at the parking meter in my unintellectual black leotard. Don't tell me you were doing research on the female in show business when you asked me to kiss you goodnight in the rumble seat of your car when it wasn't even night yet. I'm going to get you a sedative. You know, it seems to me that you're confusing the biological attraction between the sexes, which in our case is all there, thank heaven, with the intelligent debate. If it was a debate, whose side were you on? <laughs> Darling, you know that I'm on your... What did you do? Oh, there's some bee flying around. Some bee flying around? Why, that was Agnes. Agnes who? Well, she was my prize carnelian queen bee. What was she doing in here? Why wasn't she down at the hive? Why, well, she has the run of the house. I am terrified of insects, Jeffrey. The very least you could have done is to call me before you committed such a wanton crime. Do you realize how rare, how, how rare Agnes is? Was? She was going to sting me. You're just not trying to understand. Do you realize that Agnes is almost irreplaceable? Now she's gone. Well, Professor, I guess I know where my billing is in this household. Somewhere below a bee. I'll leave you to mourn in private. Cut down in the prime of her life. <laughs> Jeffrey, darling. Yeah? Agnes's last and best batch. <laughs> well, I didn't mean to kill Agnes last night. I swatted her in self-defense. Which is more I can say about those people who were taking pokes at me. In that so-called intellectual discussion in which my husband never lifted a finger and wished to defend me. Some husband didn't even try to break the bedroom door down. <laughs> Hello. Mrs. Professor Edwards, how's everything? Oh, I've never been happier, Leslie. Well, you just ruined my day. <laughs> but never mind about me. I'll get over losing you eventually. But honey, right now, it's so hard saying no, no, no. Yes, I guess it is. Uh, who are you saying no, no, no to? I keep telling them, forget it. She's out of the business. She found herself a professor. Who do you keep telling it to? But nobody can believe it. <laughs> I mean, they just cannot believe that you kicked away a budding career for love behind those ivy-covered walls. Who won't believe it? Honey, look, why, why should I aggravate you by telling you about uh, the Palm Rum or uh, the Gershwin album, which they call me every minute, it's nag, nag, nag? 
or uh, the summer tour, which would only be great for you. But, uh, you know, happily, you're beyond all that. You're married. You found uh, something better than show business. Right, darling? Yes, I'm married, I'm settled, and I've found something better than show business. <sighs> it was very nice talking to you, Leslie. Please call again, and, and when you're in the neighborhood, do drop in. Lou, are you still on? <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks for waiting, baby. Now, look, Lou, on this palm room date, definitely keep it open. You understand? Lou, Lou, listen. On my word of honor, almost, I think before this semester is over, I can deliver Mrs. Professor Edward... Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, Casey McKay. <laughs> right. tradition I learned from my grandmother. Thank you very much. But I'm afraid Jeffrey doesn't believe in tradition. Never listen to your husband, my dear. Especially if he's a member of my husband's faculty. Now, the butcher you want to use is Jablonski on High Street. He has the best cuts. And here's the seamstress that'll do all your hemming. Oh, and the flower club meets on Thursdays for cocktails and bridge. I run a faculty brunch every Sunday. I'm afraid the discussions will be a bit over my head. Nonsense, my dear. Why didn't you speak up last night when they were getting out with all that intellectual claptrap about the entertainment business? What could I possibly contribute? The true professional's point of view. Ollie Harrington phoned me this morning. He told me how you and Jeff met. I think it's marvelous. So you're Casey McKay. On the surface, yes. But as far as the faculty is concerned, I am an exhibitionist, an extrovert, and have an emotional lack of practically everything. Oh, don't mind them. They love to dissect personalities. In the abstract, of course. If they'd known who you are, they'd have asked for your autograph. My husband know who I am. You know, my dear, I could have wondered how you distracted him from the binomial theory long enough to get him to marry you. But having seen you, I know you're the healthiest distraction he ever had. Oh, I wish I could believe that. But after last night, I... Oh, forget about last night. But you were there. He was dissecting me along with everybody else. What can you expect from a mathematician? I don't know anymore. Of course you don't. I've been married to a physicist for 26 years, and I still don't know. All I do know is... it can be worth it. Now, I've got to run. Oh, about that bee. Oh, you've already heard what a murderer I am. This is a very small town. If I were you, I wouldn't brood about it. As far as I'm concerned, it was justifiable homicide. <laughs> the dean keeps an ant colony. <laughs> Poor Agnes never even gave her a chance. That's it. Hit harder. Work off all your hostilities. What could you expect from her anyhow? She probably threw a tantrum, huh? She's just like the rest of those immature tomatoes in show business. She didn't have a tantrum. She's not immature. And just because she comes from show business, she's not a tomato. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I lost my temper. Yeah. Well, you should have lost it last night when they were giving your wife a workout. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Phyllis. Thanks very much. 
I'm such a good psychologist. Why can't I coach a winning team? Casey! Casey! Casey? Is that you? It is you. Casey. What what in Casey? Casey, what were you doing at the hive? Torturing myself? I went to Los Angeles and brought you another queen. Another queen? Her name's Lucille. She's of royal blood, and it took Leslie and me almost three hours to track her down. I hope the two of you will be very happy. The two of us? Your friends are right, Jeff. I don't belong here. What could a simple exhibitionist like me have to offer a man with a mind like yours? Just a pretty face? That's not enough. Someday that'll wrinkle and I'll grow old. I'll grow old like that Duesenberg of yours. Only not as classic. Just old. <laughs> oh, I don't blame you. You're the way you are, I'm the way I am. I'm a romantic and you're an intellectual. You're logical and... <coughs> And you have to be cold and unemotional. Thank you. We deal with numbers. I know that. Wouldn't it be simpler if I just made a, a clean, quick break? Big brown eyes you have. Listen, why don't you get out of that uncomfortable thing and into that, uh. And what? And what? Don't you have any papers to correct or something? Millions of them. <laughs> now I know who you are. You're the fellow that picked me up at the parking meter. Who ever heard of drinking champagne at three in the afternoon? It's a tradition. Never heard of it. I just invented it. breakfast, and I'm here to see that you get it. Sit down. Fine, fine. Ah, that's delicious juice. No seeds. That's what the can says. <laughs> that's great. Where did you learn to brew coffee like this? It's all in the wrist. <laughs> here, try this. Cake. Mmm. Not sensational. I bet that didn't come from a can. It's an old family recipe. Honey cake. <laughs> Agnes is honey. And Jeff, I didn't know her very well, but I'm sure she would have wanted it this way. 